Hey, boys and girls, how you doing? Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> I don't talk like that actually. I meant to show this in a prior video. I didn't have one out. I mean, anybody could look them up. This is one of the most cool inventions ever made. They last really forever. I never heard of anybody on Earth ever wearing one out unless it was like a little dinky one. And they make little dinky ones that like hang around your neck. I actually, this one has a hole in it. You could hang it around your neck too. This is the scratcher for it. However, you could use any piece of steel, like a rusty nail. You know, you find out in the wild. It doesn't have to actually be this because this is just a little piece of steel. I don't want to do it here and catch my table on fire, <laughs> which I could easily do. It's called a ferrocerium rod. You know? It'll start a fire if it's completely wet. You just flick the water off of it. It's composed of uh, several different metals. Yeah. <clears throat> a derivative of this is actually used in uh, welding. But you just scratch it and send out sparks, really hot sparks. It'll light. Unless it's absolutely soaking wet, it'll basically light anything that is lightable for shorting a fire. Like I said, I got a cord on this one so you could hang it around your neck. This is the single best amazing survival tool ever made, and it's absolutely fascinating. Anybody that's never seen one before and you show them how it works, they're like, wow, there's probably a million videos on ferrocerium rods on YouTube. I know there is. You can look them up. And these are like, uh, this is a big one, half inch by five inches long. I'll run you about 14 bucks or something like that. Maybe 20 bucks if you only buy one. You should buy like five of them and give them away as gifts. They never wear out. Fascinating, right? Um, uh, our uh, El Presidente de Estados Unidos, <laughs> whatever you, you think of that person one way or the other, was talking about uh, food shortages the day before yesterday. And this had to do with a lot of stuff. There's been disruptions. There's been hyperinflation. There is definitely going to be a recession later this year. And I'm not a doom and gloomer. I, I can't stand people. Some YouTubers, that's all they do is like doom and gloom. Like every day is like, oh, the solar flare that's going to kill the earth is next week. And when that doesn't happen, it's like, oh, no, no, it's next week. <laughs> this is all they do is stuff like that. I don't do stuff like that. Um, I know something for a fact. I'll talk about that just here in a second. You know, not speculation, rumor, or anything like that. There are food shortages. Uh, there have actually been uh, food lines, bread lines, which you haven't seen bread lines since the Great Depression up in uh, New York. And these are not just deadbeats lining up for bread. I mean, they're not going to wait hours for a little bread and a little bit of food, but they are. Not because, you know, they can afford it and they just wanted some freebies. And that, of course, does happen in the United States and other places. Um, there are for food shortages due to hyperinflation, delivery issues. There's going to be a recession later this year. The best experts on Earth said there's going to be a recession. I forget this particular index, which is 100% accuracy on predicting a recession. I forget it, but it's uh, right off the scale. So there is going to be a recession. Um, I know people are suffering on food. I mean, I know I'm fat, but I eat cheap food. I really do. I don't ever buy fancy food of any kind. Listen, I have no wife, no kid, no house payment, no car payment, and I'm bleeding at the grocery store. Yeah? Like, it's ridiculous. Where do I fall on the scale of making money? Well, I don't make much. Um, I've made quite a bit more in earlier parts of my life, but I mean, other than the enormous amount of taxes I just pay and the fact that I have to work seven days a week and I, I do work several jobs, I mean, I'm okay. Um, but I know that someone like me and with no car payment, no house payment, no wife, no kids, if I'm bleeding at the grocery store, ready to pass out over the food prices, and I don't buy anything fancy to eat, I know people that work a nine to five job, 
you know, with a wife, a kid, a house payment, and a car payment, with ridiculous gas prices, they are struggling to buy food. I've seen it. I, I have seen it. I see people fighting on what to buy. All of a sudden, men generally don't use coupons. All of a sudden, I'm seeing all these men walking around the grocery store with coupons in their hand. They're like, this is all I can buy because I can get this cheap. It's got a coupon for it. Um, Ukraine is a breadbasket of Europe, but have 25% of the world's topsoil. Um, fertilizer also, too. Um, we get uh, 1.3 billion in fertilizer from Russia alone here in the United States. That is completely 100% ended. Completely 100% ended. I don't know if you know where fertilizer is coming from, but China and Russia... Uh, it's times like this that I'm extremely proud to have uh, farmland that I could... And I do know how to grow veggies. I mean, I do know how to farm. I don't have to be a farmer. I mean, I, I grew up messing around my grandfather's farm and growing stuff with him. I know how to stake things and take care of things. I can grow fruits and veggies, believe it or not. Mr. City Slicker here. Um, the only good thing I could think out of the, all the evil that's going on in the world right now, with all the sanctions and the rest of it, where the world has been so interconnected to everything else, which is a really bad thing. I always say globalism is pure evil, and it is. As this looks like it's going to spend the end, uh, spell the end of globalism. Did you know we got 1.3 billion in fertilizer from Russia alone? And 100% of that has been completely cut off. Some fertilizers, there are different types of fertilizers, where farmers are reporting are three or four times as high. 300 to 400% higher costs on some fertilizers. The best experts on earth have said that Russia's GDP, gross domestic product, would decline by 30%. That is directly equivalent to the Great Great Depression of the United States in the earliest part of the last century. Over 30%. Everybody agrees that sanctions uh, against Russia have been incredible, and European unity has been absolutely off the scale. Even the Swiss, who never take sides on anything, complete neutrality, nearly so anyway, have uh, carved, uh, excuse me, have uh, caved to uh, hard sanctions on Russia. Um, I watched a lot of videos of uh, just regular, everyday Russians and the prices that they're paying increase-wise. Like uh, fish is up 100%, meat is up 30% or so. That's basically kind of what's going on here in the United States. I have no love for any government. All governments are evil. Some are a whole lot more evil than others. Um, Putin came on uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday and he said the West is trying to cancel Russia. I don't know what you think on that one way or the other. I mean, that's just as stupid as if I were to, like, break into my neighbor's house and, like, destroy all the furniture. And then when the cops come to get me and haul me away, you know, I start whining and moaning about, uh, oh, man, darn... <laughs> Oh, man, cops are trying to cancel me, man. They're trying to keep a, a good guy down. I mean, give me a break. A leads to B leads to C. That kind of uh, radical propaganda is ridiculous. I don't care whose side you're on or not. but <clears throat> It is unfortunate, though, that the West, undeniably so, um, has been f drooling, drooling at the mouth at the prospect of proxy war with Russia. No offense against Ukraine, none at all, but let's be serious here. The West and the White House does not care really much of a hoot about Ukraine. What they care about is drooling at the, drooling at the mouth, kind of like if you shake a, a dog bone in front of a, a hungry dog and you know it starts drooling. The idea of a proxy war with Russia 
as far as the military industrial complex and the White House, so on and so forth, they've been drooling like a dog you shake a milk bone in front of at a proxy war. It's not that they care about Ukraine. Oh, the great Ukrainian people. You know, I want to help the Ukrainian people. I got nothing against helping the Ukrainian people. Nothing. If I had the resources, I'd, I'd, I would absolutely help them. Like if I were some mega rich uh, guy from uh, like Bezos or which I wouldn't want to be one of those people. But I mean, if I had that kind of money, I would be, I would be helping him right now. But, uh, so the only bright light of this is apparently the, the end of globalism. Food shortages are real. If you're going to be stockpiling anything, it should be sprouting seeds. You don't even need to have a farm to make use of sprouting seeds. Um, Super, super poor people in Southeast Asia have uh, been using rice. Not that, like, rice is their favorite food, but it's a filler. You know, you take a plate of rice and you put a little bit of real food. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of real food on top of it. And when you eat all of it together, it makes it seem like you've had a full meal, even though all you ate, uh, all you've really eaten is 85% rice. Um, sprouting seeds can be an incredible filler. Just a handful of alfalfa sprouting seeds or mung bean seeds, after, you know, washing water over them for a few days, several times a day, you have mung beans, uh, you can fry them up like burgers. They have an, you know, I, I love mung beans. You could just eat them raw, or you could put dressing on top of them, or balsamic vinegar, or you could fry them up, or... There's a million things you could do with mung bean sprouts. Same with alfalfa sprouts. <clears throat> I have a couple hundred pounds of sprouting seeds, and that's a lot. I mean, even five pounds of alfalfa sprouting seeds it goes a really, really long way. There are going to be food shortages. I have uh, at least a year's worth of uh, non-perishable dried food stored up in the form of uh, mountain house meals and sprouting seeds and other things. But recession combined with hyperinflation, combined with super high gas prices, combined with the lack of fertilizer is going to make for a perfect storm. There's just no chance in hell that these things, lack of fertilizer, insane, insanely high, high price of fertilizer, Recession, ultra, ultra off the scale, crazy inflation, crazy insane gas prices. You know, food is delivered via truck. Pretty sure those trucks run off of diesel. Yeah. All of those things are never been a point in time in history. I even ask you the question. Name a single point in time in history. Not the Great Depression. Not even World War II, where all of these things were going on at the same time. Superinflation, insane gas prices, lack of fertilizer, insane prices on fertilizer. Um, what were the other two? Yeah, gas, lack of fertilizer, crazy high prices on fertilizer, super hyperinflation, and absolute recession, which is right around the corner. Name another point in history when that's happened here in the United States. There isn't one where all those things have come together. Make of that what you will. Tell me what you think, though. I'm always eager to listen. I'm always open to facts, logic, and wisdom. Tell me additional details or tell me where I'm wrong. Either way. Goodbye.